To wrap up the college algebra portion of our course, we are going to move on into the law of uninhibited or the law of natural growth or decay. The law of natural growth and decay states the following. The rate at which quantity grows or decays, growing if it's getting bigger, decaying if it's getting smaller, is proportional to the size of the quantity. Now, I don't expect pre-calculus students to have a good understanding of what I'm about to write, but there is a way to translate this into what's known as a differential equation. A differential equation is a particular branch of calculus that hopefully, with practice, you'll get to someday. So this states that the rate at which the size of an object changes is proportional to, proportional to means a constant times, whatever that quantity happens to be. Now, we don't need to understand this as pre-calculus or algebra students. What we need to be able to understand and analyze is the solution of this differential equation. So for us in pre-calculus, here's what we need to understand. A is a function of t. t represents time. And I will take a moment to define all of the quantities that are relevant to this, uh, this equation right here. So let's go ahead and define them. A, I refer to A <clears throat> as a function of t because A refers to the amount of the quantity in question. It's the amount of quantity after time t. The amount of the quantity after time t. That also takes us to our second quantity right here. This little subscript zero that gets used, uh, you'll frequently see in chemistry and physics and a lot of the natural sciences refers to the initial amount of the quantity in question. So this is the initial amount of A. Now there are generally three different names that we give to that little subscript zero that we see there. And actually that's, that's the first one that we use. And this one's for uh, the fans of Mortal Kombat out there as well. Because it's a subscript zero, we refer to it as A sub zero. Uh, sub being short for subscript, that just means it's written down here instead of in line with the rest of what you're writing. We can also refer to it as a naught or a naught. Uh, like I tell my students, it's not not, it's naught. And finally, this one doesn't work particularly well with A, uh, but the word null typically also refers to that little subscript zero. If you can't figure out why null is not a good thing to say right after A, go ahead and sound it out. Try it out. <clears throat> now this one should hopefully be pretty clear as well. T refers to the amount of time that has passed. Now, depending on the kind of problem you're doing, it could refer to a number of seconds, it could refer to minutes, it could refer to hours, weeks, years. It just depends on what information is given in the problem that you make an appropriate decision about what the appropriate units would be. And finally, we have K. K is referred to as the relative growth rate. Because our quantity, oh, excuse me, or decay. Because this thing could be growing or decaying. <clears throat> because it's proportional to the size of the actual quantity, we say that this is a relative growth rather than a linear growth or uh, other kind of growth. Uh, this is also referred to as an exponential growth because t, being our independent variable, is located in an exponent. So because it is in an exponent, this is why it's referred to as an exponential growth or decay. Growth or decay. <clears throat> now, with that in mind, if k is greater than zero, then we are dealing with a growth model. <clears throat> if k is less than zero, then we are dealing with a decay model. The reason being, if we have a positive exponent on our exponential, that means that as t increases, the value of the exponential will be growing as well. Whereas if we have a negative exponent, then as t increases, our exponent is now getting bigger in the negative direction. That means that the overall quantity would be getting smaller. <clears throat> the other thing that we can say is that if k is relatively small,
I would say as long as k is somewhere between negative 0.5 and 0.5, So again, negative for a decay model and positive for a, uh, a growth model. As long as it's relatively small, then k approximates a percent growth or decay rate. We'll get into an example of that in the next video. I just wanted to make sure that everything got defined here. Now, one other thing that I wanted to reiterate before we move on to our next video is the reason that I used A as our dependent variable back here is that A refers to an amount. Now, please know that that is not restricted. It doesn't have to be that way. So, for example, if we wanted to talk about a population, we could use P to describe the population. So, P of T is equal to P naught e to the kt. Or if we were referring to the mass of a radioactive substance, we could say m of t is equal to m naught e to the kt. So generally, um, whatever sort of thing you're modeling, that's the letter that we would use over here to describe the dependent variable. So as we're working through examples, if you see the function name happen to change, well, take a look at whatever it is we are modeling, and that probably lets you know why we're using that letter.